Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about ions. Now I chose this picture here about electrolytes because when we talk about electrolytes we're actually talking about ions like sodium ion and potassium ion and these are necessary for, for life in general and particularly if you're working out like this guy in the picture. So we have one learning goal for today, to determine the number of electrons that need to be gained or lost from an atom in order to become an ion. So what is an ion? It's an atom that has either gained or lost electrons, and it could be one electron, it could be many electrons, to obtain a full valence shell. Now remember, valence shell means the outer shell. If we look at our Bohr Rutherford diagram, sometimes there's only one shell, sometimes there's multiple shells. The one that comes on the very outside of that particular atom is called the valence shell. So here we have fluorine, it has two shells, and the outer shell has seven electrons. Now it can either gain one electron to get eight, eight will be a full valence shell for a second shell, or it could lose seven electrons. Now in this case, gaining that one electron would be much easier than losing seven electrons. So here the fluoride ion has one extra electron. Now if you notice the names there, fluorine, turns into fluoride ion. So when you gain electrons, the atom changes the ending from I-N-E or whatever the ending happens to be. If it was oxygen, then it's the gen part of oxygen, and it changes to I-D-E, and then the word ion appears afterwards to indicate that it's an ion. So it has gained one electron, and we call this an anion. So atoms that have gained electrons, one or more electrons, are referred to as anions. Now let's look at sodium. Sodium has electrons in three different shells. The outer shell has one electron. Now it could either lose that one electron or it could gain seven electrons. It's much simpler to lose that one electron, so the sodium ion would look like this. Now if you look at the name here, sodium turns into sodium ion. We don't change the ending to IDE when it's lost electrons. Although we do add the word ion there to indicate that we're dealing with an ion. So sodium has lost one electron and we refer to these as cations. Now one way to remember the difference between anion, which is gaining electrons, and cation, which is losing electrons, is that cats have paws and so cations are positive, which means if they've lost electrons which have negative charges, they themselves become positively charged. So let's take a look at a simple way to figure out if there are going to be gain or loss of electrons and how many. So here we have the Lewis dot diagrams of the first 20 elements and we've already taken a look at the pattern so everything in the first column has one valence electron, everything in the second column two valence electrons and all the way across to eight. Now it's much simpler to either gain or lose fewer electrons. So it's much simpler if there's fewer valence electrons to lose those electrons compared to gaining a lot of electrons and if there are many valence electrons it's simpler to gain some valence electrons than to lose all of the electrons that it has. So the pattern that we actually see is that everything in the first column is likely to lose that one valence electron, everything in the second column will lose two, the next one will lose three. When we get to the carbon family, it can either gain or lose four. It sort of goes either way because it's just as easy to gain four and just as easy to lose four. The next column now will gain three electrons. The next column gain two, gain one, and then when we get to the noble gases, these aren't likely to gain or lose electrons. They very, very, very rarely form any sort of compound and they don't form ions. So let's take another look at our learning goal. You should be able to determine the number of electrons that need to be gained or lost for an atom to become an ion. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.